In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is the feast of St. Charbel Macluf. He was born in the Lebanon, and uh, about, I think, 1823, and he became a monk in what's known as the Maronite Church, or Rites. You know, in the Catholic Church, there are about 23, they call them Rites, R-I-T-E, meaning how we worship God. We're in the Latin Rite, but he belonged to the Maronite Rite, M-A-R-O-N-I-T-E. If you check it out on the internet, they have a very nice little video, short, four minutes, which they record the Mass. They use Arabic and lots of incense, and the priest keeps the crucifix in his hand practically right the way through the Mass. So he joined this church as a monk and was a hermit for 23 years. And after he died, um, his tomb became a pilgrimage place. And he was canonized by Pope St. Paul VI in 1977. So we ask him to pray for us, especially for his own country. Lebanon's in a terrible way at the moment, as you probably know. So we ask him to intercede for you and me, that we would make space for God and other people in our lives. And we gather and we ask pardon for our sins. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who called the priest St. Charbel Maclouf to the solitary combat of the desert and imbued him with all manner of devotion, grant us, we pray, that being made imitators of the Lord's passion, we may merit to be co-heirs of his kingdom, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Come back, disloyal children. It is the Lord who speaks. For I alone am your master. I will take one from a town, two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, and these shall feed you on knowledge and discretion. And when you have increased and become many in the land, then it is the Lord who speaks. No one will ever say again, where is the ark of the covenant of the Lord? There will be no thought of it, no memory of it, no regret for it, no making of another. When that time comes, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord. All the nations will gather there in the name of the Lord and will no longer follow the dictates of their own stubborn hearts. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, the Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. All nations, hear the word of the Lord. Proclaim it to the far off coast. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and guard him as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, has saved him from an overpowering hand. They will come and shout for joy on Mount Zion. They will stream to the blessings of the Lord. The Lord who guards us as a shepherd guards his flock. 
Then the young girls will rejoice and dance. The men, young and old, will be glad. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console them, give gladness for grief. The Lord who guards us as a shepherd guards his flock. Let's stand up for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you're to hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom without understanding, the evil one comes and carries off what was sown in his heart. This is the man who received the seed on the edge of the path. The one who received it on patches of rock is the man who hears the word and welcomes it at once with joy. But he has no root in him. He does not last. Let some trial come or some persecution on account of the word and he falls away at once. The one who received the seed in thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this world and the lure of riches choke the word, and so he produces nothing. And the one who received the seed in rich soil is the man who hears the word and understands it, he is the one who yields a harvest and produces now a hundredfold, now sixty, now thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Just let's sit down for a moment to reflect. Ignatius of Loyola, as a layperson, after his conversion in the 1500s, wrote a little program called The Spiritual Exercises. And in it, he suggests that at the end of the day, if we just ask the Holy Spirit to point out to you and me where we experienced God. It's not so much an examination of conscience as an awareness an examination of our, was I aware of God? And if I was, did I welcome him? Did I experience him? And could have been the smile of a colleague or a friend or kind act I did or somebody else did, whatever, so that we become aware of God. And then maybe I also become aware of where I refused to be open to God or to be open to the needs of other persons if I could have done it. And so we ask pardon for our coldness and we ask the Lord, we praise him for being with us. I think in that way it might help us to make real this parable of this sore. Where is God in my life? I mean, St. Charbel felt drawn as a hermit 
Well, we're not all drawn to be hermits, but we're all drawn by God in our own way, given our own circumstances and our personalities and our occupations and whether we're married or single or whatever, you know. to you, Lord, God. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness. We've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made for the salvation of your people, so that through the intercession of blessed Charbel, we may flee the enticements of sin and draw near to the company of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvellous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let's pray the second Eucharistic prayer with the acclamation, we proclaim your death, O Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon us like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Vincent, Saint Louise, Saint Charbel, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ.
antiphon is from Psalm 83. Blessed are they who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. Let us pray. Grant our request, we pray, O Lord our God, that defended by the protection of blessed Sharba, we may live by the sacrament of your wisdom in serenity and moderation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and glorify the Lord by your lives.